It's about seven to eight minutes, I think, end to end. But this is a full match of 4v4 Slayer, Halo Infinite, in our tech preview, essentially, version of this build um, on Live Fire. So, Josh, go ahead and roll that when you're ready. Play them all, Bart. All right, yeah, I think this is a, this is a pro team POV. Uh, well, let's see how good they are. <laughs> right off the bat, going yeah, for the so heat he's got wave. the heat wave, right? Yep. So, you, so you switch the vert. That, there's Stitzer. A, Stites. It's good to have Stitzer back. Or we call it, there's some nickname of Stitzy is kind of the, the, the v, people implementing the VO. They threw down a shield, covered the position. Yeah, I like that little peek technique. I haven't I haven't personally done that to be honest. Yeah, I feel like I learned a lot by watching this protein video actually and how to play it. Like we watch them, we have regular weekly play tests with them. I don't play with them generally because they just they're so good. And we have we put our kind of better players up against them. Also notice that player went straight for the power weapon that spawns on this map in Slayer, which is um, hard for me to use, if I'm being honest. <laughs> so you'll see, like, I mean, so you can see the friend foe. That's one of the obvious things you're looking at here. I know Sam was talking about it earlier. And this is something that we've continued to kind of iterate and evolve, even beyond this build. I think this, all oh, this might be our main build right now. Um, this power weapon spawns there. The skewer is, uh, it's satisfying as heck but it's, it's hard for me to use. I am, I, am, I am worse at that gun than I am at the commando rifle, for sure. When you hit a target, like especially a vehicle, it's super satisfying. All right, so he was spectating. He missed the new one. Tried for it. Tried for it. Hard for us to hear in studio, but I, I believe there you'll hear in some personal AI coming through. Yeah, you're hearing. There's a few things. So we, there's the Spartan chatter that we had in Halo Five. It really just kind of brings the battlefield, gives a lot more like reaction feedback to what's going on in the game. But you'll hear this personal AI. And what we did with them is we replaced what was called Spartan leader, our team leader, um, and they are. It's just a more personal version of that, and they have a lot of personality, and so it lets you kind of swap around and kind of customize that feedback. And they give you a lot of low-level fit. Pulled the power up. Yeah, I was just going to mention, you know, that's a different a change, right? It doesn't activate on pickup anymore. You can hold on to it. Yeah, we think that'll bring a lot uh, in the long term and allow us to do more things with power-ups than kind of just, you know, traditional kind of just quick stat kind of reflections by having, like, really a the notion of power equipment in the game. One thing that we won't see from as in this point of view, I really love the visual language that you and the team have introduced. It's, it's very obvious when someone's pocketing a power-up like that. You'll see a, a glowing trail yeah, behind like them. like a contrail behind them. Yeah, that was a big thing, is making sure we at least telegraphed that information. That was, you know, making that switch, there was a lot of critical lenses on making sure that there was at least a readability to it in the gameplay. I mean, so now it's sort of that risk-reward, right? Do I do I hold this and wait for that final push? Do I burn it now so I don't lose it? Yeah, you make a lot of choices that way. Like, I, you know, I sometimes will pocket it and think I'm getting cocky, and then I'll lose it, and I'll give, like, over... Oh, that was a dope. I'll, I'll give the OS to the, the enemy, which is, you know, super risky at that point. We're seeing a couple of the little sort of... What do we call those? Tutorial tips popping up there, which yeah. you, you can turn off in the settings. Yeah, you can right? turn them off, but on the they're death tips is what we call them. But yeah, giving a little bit of feedback, you know, about the type of weapon that killed you, or like how you can re respond better to it. I'm not sure at this point the pro team needs to needs to know that like, hey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really. Or like just opt out if you don't really care about it, if you don't need that information, or it makes you feel bad, as some people might feel. I do love this map. Yeah, the pelicans flying by. It's the, you know, it's an homage to Sergeant Johnson, Sergeant Avery Johnson Academy of. Um, so it's kind of cool just to kind of pay homage to like you know one of ours and everybody's favorite character in the side of the Halo canon. By the way, whoever this player is is just getting getting active camo every spawn. <laughs> I don't know what the other team's up to right now. Seems to be uh, watching that call out. Yeah, we the power ups we treat those like you know like like the power weapons and stuff. They're up on a pad. They have a lot of messaging and broadcasting about them, so you know when they're coming up. Now your Spartan AI will tell you that, right? Yeah, the Spartan AI calls it out as well. So there's a lot of information just kind of driving feedback. You get the stick there. You can see like he'll, like there's the weapon pa radix you'll see in the levels as well. He ran past one a second. Right? Yeah, right yeah, back there. Yeah, see in the background, background, right? Yep. What's cool about them is like, you know, before you might run past a 
a, where a weapon would spawn and then not realize that it's coming up in two seconds and it could change your choice and like how you deal with it. Like when we play test this morning, I actually stopped at one point on a weapon rack because I was like, oh, it's like two seconds out. I might as well wait for it and switch out my pistol, which I'm, I think I'm just telling everybody that I'm really bad with a lot of the guns in our game. <laughs> I do love the sidekick. I'm, yeah, I, it's really cool, and like when somebody's really good with it, it's really threatening because they can just feather that thing super fast. And just this people. this player really likes this little like uh, drop wall kind of yeah covering a post huh? yeah and, like kind of locking down an entryway so they can watch their back. It's neat to watch how people use these like all the different equipments in different ways. Well, hopefully a lot of players this weekend are going to be uh, lighting us up on social, sharing clips with us, because I, I can't wait to see just some of the new creative ways that the community at large figures out how to use this new sandbox. Yeah, and it's interesting, too. Like, I mean, like, the way we have our maps tuned, like, in our main builds is they have different equipment and stuff on them, and because we don't have the entire sandbox in the flights, is we swap things out. So it's actually not even the same kind of, basically, map placement path that we would have in the, the release version of the game. But we, you know, it just at least gives us something so we can get something in there for people to play with. Oh, match is getting close. You can hear the music starting to kick up, kind of signifying the end of the match is coming. Uh, I do, I do love that. The the, uh, the multiplayer music, very cool. I'm really proud of the multiplayer music. There's a a cool story about how we got to basically getting the music in the game, um, but it really meets this tone. It's something I've really wanted since Halo Four this kind of post-rock soundtrack to the multiplayer. Well, actually just a Halo, but it became uh, one of my goals for multiplayer. Last kill. Yeah, oh, there got we go. There we go. 